What is up guys and welcome to another video. In this tutorial we're going to cover dealing and taking damage. First I'm going to explain how dealing and taking damage works in its simplest form. Then we're going to look at how we can deal and take damage through enemy AI. But before we get into that, a big thank you to all my Patreons for supporting me and welcome Jay Katil to the team and thank you for joining. So dealing and taking damage is actually super simple. Unreal has even implemented some nodes to make this even easier. And those are the apply damage node and the event any damage node. The apply damage node is called in the blueprint that you want to deal the damage. Its job is to tell the program who the damage is going to and how much damage to deal. You can also give extra inputs, but those two are the only required ones. The event any damage node is called in the blueprint that you want to take the damage. This node is triggered by the apply damage node. Its job is to receive any damage values and use them to lower the character's health and anything extra, like playing a hit animation. So for dealing and taking damage, the general setup would look like this. And that's pretty much it. So now we're gonna implement this for our character and AI. For anyone who just dropped in on this video, this tutorial is actually a continuation from my previous AI tutorials. So in order to do what we're about to do, you will need at least a character which can attack with animations. And then of course, if you want an AI to attack you back, you'll need to be caught up with my AI tutorials. If you don't wanna do that, I'll leave a link in the description to download the project I'm using, or if you just wanna follow along, don't worry, you will still learn something. So let's go. First, we're gonna import a knockback type animation to play when our character gets hit. I'll leave a link in the description to download this. Make sure when you're importing that you select your existing skeleton. When it's imported, we're gonna right click, create, and in montage. So now we've got a montage with a slot, we can merge this into our character's animation when required. Now let's add a collision box to our weapon. If your weapon is in your character blueprint, put the collision box in there. If your weapon is in a separate blueprint, put it in there. Mine is in a separate blueprint, so I'm gonna open it up, add component, then pop a collision box on like so. Into the event graph, with your collision box selected, bring in a on component begin overlap node, then bring in a apply damage node. Connect the actor from the overlap into the apply damage actor slot. Give the apply damage a base damage of 10. To prevent the enemy from getting hit multiple times from one swing, we're gonna add a do once in between the two nodes. Hold D plus click to bring in a delay and connect that coming off the apply damage node. Put in a value of around 0.4. Then off the delay, we're gonna reset our do once. Double click the connection to add a reroute node. So we're gonna hit, wait 0.4 seconds, then reset the do once so we can hit again. Now let's jump into our third person blueprint. So we're actually gonna set up our character to take damage before our AI, just for anyone out there who is following along without any AI. So let's bring in a event any damage node, then create a new variable called health as a type float. Control drag it in to get a reference, then pull off it and bring in a minus float node. Attach the event any damage output into this, so we're subtracting the damage we take from our health. Then alt drag in our health variable to set it as our newly damaged health. Now let's bring in a print string and connect our health into this, just so we know what value our health is at. And finally, I'm gonna bring in a play and in montage node, and we're gonna play our hit react montage. Then for anyone with the same project as me, we're actually gonna go up to our attack section and we're gonna select our set save attack, set attack count, and set attacking with control plus clicking each one. Then we're gonna go back down to our take damage and press control W to duplicate them. Plug them in coming off our play anim node and make sure they are all false with attack count being zero. So we've done this to reset our attacking settings and combos back to zero when we take a hit. This will be different for anyone out there with a different attacking setup. So when an apply damage triggers our event any damage, we're gonna lower our health then play a hit animation and reset our attack settings. And that's everything we need to take and deal damage. But we're missing one thing. 
and that's in our sword. We need to tell the program when we want the applied damage to be active. Because at current, anytime someone overlaps with our sword collision box, they will take damage. So if the sword is sheathed, it could still do damage. And not only this, but as we are dealing damage to anyone who overlaps the sword, when the player picks up the sword, it will do damage to themselves. So we need to tell the program that we only want the damage to be active at certain times during the attack animation. And we can do this with a branch condition and an anim notify to update this condition. So first let's create the condition. So let's create a bool variable. Call it attack ready. Control drag it in to get a reference to it. Then press B and click to bring in a branch. Connect these up and plug it in coming off our overlap with the do once coming off the true. So now we have a branch condition where we will only apply damage if our attack ready bool is true. Now let's create a way to update this value. So jump into your content browser to your attack animations and open up your first attack. In the notify row, right click, add notify, new notify. Call this attack ready and put it at a time where you want your blade to be able to do damage. I'm going to put mine at around the 11 frame mark. Now right click to create another notify and call this attack not ready and put this at a time where you want to stop your blade from doing damage. I'm going to put mine at around the 13 frame mark. Now do this for each one of your attack animations. I'm going to speed this section up. Okay, cool. So now we have triggers on our animations. Now we just need to set up these triggers to update our weapons attack ready variable. So jump into your third person and in blueprint. Into the event graph, we're gonna bring in the two notifiers we just made, attack ready and attack not ready. Now this step might be slightly different for you depending how you've got everything set up. If you've got your weapon built in with your character, this step is super easy. All you need to do is drag off your pawn owner and set attack ready to true on the ready event and false on the not ready event. But for anyone who's been following my tutorial series, our weapon is in a separate blueprint and we have multiple weapons. So we don't have a direct reference we can use to update this attack ready variable. All we have is an empty equipped weapon variable, which gets set when we pick up a weapon. So what we need to use is a blueprint interface and we already made a blueprint interface in our weapon pickup tutorial, so we're just going to use that one. I'm not going to go into blueprint interfaces in this episode, but I'll leave a link in the description to that video for anyone who doesn't know what one is. So, into our content browser. Open up our interface, and we're going to add two functions. One called attack ready, and one called attack not ready. Now back into our weapon blueprint, we can now call these two events. So bring in your attack ready event and bring in your attack not ready event. Then we're going to alt drag in our attack ready variable. Set it to true for attack ready, control W to duplicate it and set it to false coming off the not ready. Cool, now we just need to call these. So back into our anim blueprint event graph, we can now call these two events. So right click, bring in the attack ready, then right click again, bring in the attack not ready bring in the equipped weapon variable from the character blueprint and connect this into these events. Like I said, you'll only have this if you've been following my tutorials, but if you don't have it, just make sure you're updating your attack ready your own way or check out my pickup weapon tutorial to add the interface. So even though our equipped weapon is blank when we start the game, when it gets filled with a weapon mid game, our attack ready and attack not ready will fire off for the weapon we just picked up. So now into the content browser, if we duplicate our third person character and attack him, our character doesn't take any damage, but the third person dummy does. Awesome. Now let's do the AI. Before you open it up, let's copy some blueprints over from the third person blueprint. So open up your third person BP, select the entire damage line nodes and control C to copy. Then go into your NPC blueprint and control V to paste this in. For the health variable, instead of recreating it, what we can do is just right click it and create variable health. Taking damage is exactly the same for the NPC as it is the character, so now that's done. 
Now all we need to do is the dealing damage. This time, as our AI already has his weapon equipped, we can just add the collision box directly into the AI blueprint. So into the viewport, add the collision box to the weapon, just like we did for the character weapon. Now let's copy some nodes over from our character weapon. So open it up, select the entire overlapping blueprint section and control C to copy. Back into our AI blueprint, control V to paste them in. Make sure your on component overlap event is firing off for the collision box you made on your AI weapon. Then right click the attack ready variable and create variable. Just like the character attack, our AI attack is exactly the same, but we're gonna make one small change. We're actually gonna bring in a cast two node for our third person character. We don't want our AI to accidentally kill each other. We only want them to be able to attack the player. So bring in your cast and put it in just after the overlap event. Plug your other actor from your overlap event into your cast, then plug your third person character cast into the applied damage. By using this cast, our AI sword will only trigger an overlap if they are overlapping our character, meaning they can only damage our character. Now we just need to update our attack ready variable. So into our AI and in blueprint, into the event graph, as our AI is using the same animations as our character, the notifiers are already done. If you're using different attack animations for your character and AI, make sure you add the notifiers to the AI attack animations. So bring in the two notifiers, attack ready and attack not ready. And this time, as our AI attack isn't in a separate weapon blueprint, we can change our attack ready variable directly. So off our pawn owner, set attack ready then set it to true for your attack ready notify and false for your attack not ready notify. And we are done. In the next few episodes, we're gonna be covering AI targeting, blocking attacks and dying. So be sure to stay tuned for those. If you'd like to see the next episode this very second, be sure to check out my Patreon and get that early access. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time. <laughs>